Hello, my name is Walter Brewster, and like you, I'm a practitioner working for Soundstorm. I've been asked to provide some video guidance for producing video lessons for students. So we're going to be looking at a typical video lesson that may not last more than 15 or 20 minutes, bearing in mind attention spans, and the equipment you might use, and the software as well on various devices. Thank you for filling in the skills audit, which is going to be helping us to provide and target exactly the right information. So we're starting today, since so many people wrote in to say they would like basic help, we're going to start with something that should work for many people. It's an app called Loom, and it's something that will record you in a face-on-to-camera face method like this, or it will record your computer screen, or it can put both together at the same time. I'll come to its limitations a little bit later on and I'll come to some other things that you might need to get right in order to give your video the best possible effect. So, good luck, see if you can now follow what's going to happen with installing and doing your first recordings with Loom. So, if we go to the Loom website at loom.com, you will see that there is a place to get Loom for free. So we click on that and we're taken to a sign up. You can either sign in with Google or various other apps it may offer you, or you can simply put your own email address in and create a free account. Now on this machine, I've already got the account set up. So what you would have if you are doing this for the first time is an email come to you, and then you simply go to that email and uh, click the link within there and log on to the website ready to install. Uh, installation on a Mac, you will hit the download, it will go into your download folder and you will usually get an invitation when you click on that, you'll see the Loom logo that we've got up here and an arrow pointing to your applications folder. Uh, within that box, you simply drag <coughs> the Loom application into, appli sorry, into applications itself and then you'll be able to start up Loom for your desktop. You'll also see another version available that says for the Chrome browser, but I'm going to suggest you go with the desktop version because this is going to let you do a number of the things we're going to look at here. If you're downloading on a Windows computer, it's going to be much the same, except you'll receive an executable file in your download folder and you'll double click that and proceed in the same way. So once you've got Loom on board on your computer and it's started up, you will see if it's a Mac, an icon at the top of the screen which uh, is the Loom logo again, and you will also then be able to start making your first video. Uh, if you've now got Loom installed, and we simply go to the top of our taskbar, or you may have it on a dock at the bottom, we are going to click on that and see the Loom menu. Now you'll see that uh, a little snapshot of me has opened at the bottom corner. I can make that uh, slightly bigger. I could make it full screen if I wished to by pressing here. Uh, or if I click the last icon, I could just have a permanent still shot of myself in this circle here. Um, finally, I can cease the recording by clicking on the X at the end. Uh, over to the left of my screen, you're going to see a stop button for a recording that we're going to start in a moment, a pause, a bin. You'll probably hit that quite a lot of times in your first trials to make a video. And then we've got a marker, which enables you to write on in color and highlight anything. And those marks disappear a few seconds after you put them on the screen. So looking up at this box here, I've got the possibility of recording my screen and the cam that's on my face here. Or I could just record the screen only, which could mean I could display uh, PowerPoint slides, any kind of slide, a web page, anything you like really. And then finally, I could just have the camera only and showing my full screen uh, face and uh, a picture of that. Now, let's just see what starting a recording does to this because uh, if I hit the red button here, we get a countdown and then I'm recording. Now, just bear in mind at this point that this circle of mine will start to pixelate a bit because I'm actually recording a recording here, so it's getting itself a bit confused. Um, I'm going to minimise that. 
and I'm going to show you now what I can do. Remember, I'm now recording both my uh, face and I'm also able to open up a uh, presentation. Notice that I've still got this on top over here. And if I maximize this presentation, I'm still here. This stays on top all the time. And even if I go into playing my presentation, I'm still down the bottom. And just look over the left hand side. The red button is the one that I'm going to use to turn off this recording. I could pause it for a while. I could get rid of it because it hasn't gone quite as I planned or I could choose to write on it. And what I'm actually going to do at the moment is I'm going to let you hear that the music can play at the same time. I've got two, uh, I've got two sound recordings on the back of this. The first one's slow. I'm going to stop that using the usual buttons on my keyboard and play a fast one. I could track the music with my cursor. In this case, it's a recorder tutorial. You could even sing along if you fancied it. And so on, so I'll just stop that there. So now you can see, it's quite possible to have yourself demonstrating there. You could make your picture a little bigger. You can have your slide share running in the background. In this case, I've got Keynote, which is a Mac slide share presentation app. I could equally well be running PowerPoint and doing that on a PC. It works exactly the same. So now you've finished your recording and if uh, you close it, you'll find you'll be taken immediately to your video and your videos are saved in this place here, it's just a folder called My Videos. You can, if you want, like make your own extra folders and use it just like a normal computer folder system. However, I've got a few videos here that we've just made, in fact, one of them, uh, this one here, and I'm gonna click on that and we're going to see what that looks like. So here's the screen with your video on. There are all sorts of things you can do with this. You can play it at different speeds. I don't quite know why you'd want to do that. You can add sorts of emoticons to it. Uh, various things over here that you'll be able to discover about uh, adding a link onto your video if you wanted to link to your own website with this video uh, and have an immediate link on screen. You can create a little picture at the beginning that represents your video, maybe a picture of an instrument or some sort of splash screen that you wanted to put on the front of every video. But the one we're interested in here at the moment, once we've played it, is going to be the trim button here, because we want to get this video in a state whereby you can distribu distribute a link to your pupils. So let's just watch what we were recording just now. So I'm recording this presentation using Loom, and at the moment I'm just recording a piece to camera and I've got controls on my screen that I'm going to let you have a look at in a moment. But first of all, let's look at how we would download this software. So there we go. And That's all working away. Now, piece. when I get near the end, let's just play the end. If we can get there, doesn't look like it wants to let us do that. Um, I'm going to start it again. So I'm recording this presentation using Loom, and at the moment okay. I'm just recording. So we're going to stop that to just for a second and, and hit the trim button. Now, when we do that, we have an editing uh, area that we can operate, and you'll see that above the timeline of your video, you have an instruction or a, rather a, an option to start trimming. So if I click that. You'll now see I've got what looks like two nice quavers with some uneven heads on the top. And I actually want to trim near the end. So I'm going to uh, slide this right to the end. And I'm going to slide this almost to the end. And you'll see that I'm looking at my face here. When I stop talking, actually, I'm going to, I'm going to cut it about there and remove that last portion. So now I just hit remove and it starts to take off that ending. So let's just click publish changes. 
and it takes a few seconds here just to do that. And then the end of my video has been neatly removed and the finished article remains in your folder. It's still working away at the moment. In a moment it will reappear and we should see that all as well. There we go. So um, let's just so I'm see if we can move that forward to here. Either a PC or a Mac. Yeah, so it finished when I mentioned the computers and there is your video. So let's just go back to where your videos are now stored. We've got an edited video here. I've done some others this morning, you can see. So a couple of other things here. Uh, you probably won't want to keep your recording described as by the date and just Loom recording. So you can go straight in here and edit it. Maybe it's uh, recorder lesson number one. Uh, maybe a school name, whatever it is you want to do. So you can you can accomplish quite a lot there. Again, from this menu, you can aim to also download it for yourself. This might be a necessity if we decide that we'd like to put all these recordings somewhere else, like maybe a Soundstorm website. Then uh, you can duplicate the video if you wish. You can also delete it and share it with others. Another thing you may have noticed that when you were watching the video content, the image is actually a mirror image. Things are reversed. You may have seen some of these sort of videos coming through Facebook video and elsewhere. So I'm just going to show you how to correct that. If you're videoing an instrument like recorder or violin and you want to show the instrument held the correct way, with the left hand at the top on the recorder and so forth, uh, it's a quite simple way of correcting that before you send your video off. So if we go to settings, You'll see there's a setting right at the bottom of the menu here called Flip Camera. Now at the moment, if you look in the main window, you'll see that my picture on the wall behind my head, all the writing is reversed. So I'm going to just uh, deselect Flip Camera, save that. And now you'll see that that picture and the writing have reversed, or rather the mirror effect has stopped. I'm going to play the video. So I'm recording this presentation using Loom and you can see that the writing now looks okay. Now there may be some situations where you would like to show the reverse so that people can get an idea of how they're holding their hands. Um, so don't ignore that one. It may be worthwhile sometimes inserting some video where you have got things reversed, but for the main part, I expect you'll want to see it looking like it is now. So that's that function. And uh, if you're concerned about it, you can simply correct it there before sending out a link. So finally, we're going to look at what we, we can do with a finished video. Here on the right hand side of your video, we have got uh, an ability to copy a link to where it's stored on the Loom website. Then we could put that into an email and forward it. We've also got the ability to change the nature of that link. We can make it public or uh, we can make it private. Uh, so at the moment it's set to only people with the link can see the video. If I hit this one, then anyone who goes to the link website could be able to find that and it would appear in a Google search. So I think for the purposes of what we're doing, it's going to be a private link. Uh, so if we do that and then we can invite people. In this case, I'm going to invite myself. So um, that's about it. We've learned how to make a video and we've learned how to edit it and we've learned how to send it out to anybody who wished to receive the video. At this stage, it's probably a good idea to make some trial recordings of your own and see how you get on with that before you feel completely confident to maybe send a link out. We've seen how Loom can record both your face through the camera We've seen how it can record the screen and put the two together. You can save the movie you create. In fact, Loom does that for you. It saves it, saves it for you on its own website. And then you could either leave it there and send a link away to your audience, or you could decide to move it back onto your computer by downloading it. You can make the link private or public. You can exert quite a lot of control. 
So, a few downsides to it. One, you'll have noticed that when it recorded the computer sound, that the sound quality is not great because it's picking it up through the computer's own microphone and you might be speaking uh, around the same time. We have ways of improving that, but you'll need to look at further videos to see other ways of improving all-round quality. The other thing that's tricky here is that joining videos isn't possible on the Loom website itself. However, if you made your movies in Loom, you could download them to other software that I'm going to show you in later videos and join them together there. In fact, that's the progression route really from using Loom as your first starting point. But let's not run to away too soon. Let's see some other things that we could still use to improve our videos. Firstly, uh, you'll notice that now the room I'm in Compared to the beginning of this video, I've turned some lights on. So if you compare the beginning and now, I've got a central light, I've got a light on behind me as well, just to give a, a better atmosphere in this space. And I've brought in some other things to the room. I'm just going to show you something you could put your laptop on. Uh, we acquired one of these at the start of the, sort of, well, when the lockdown was approaching. And it's a bit like a music stand, except very securely it's got the surface here secured underneath so that nothing will flip over like a music stand. If you think your music stand can take the weight of a laptop securely and not collapse, that would be great. I hadn't got the same confidence in mine. It's also got some uh, screws here, rubber topped, which will actually hold the laptop very securely. You could also use it for a projector, data projector, um, and it's very adjustable, really strong. Uh, that came from the Toman website. So that's really useful for getting your laptop at the right height to perform those videos. The desk is often a bit low. Uh, the other thing that I've got handy, which is going to improve sound quality in the future, something like a Zoom. This isn't a Zoom, it's an Olympus equivalent. But one of these, we're going to be talking about how you can combine the sound from one of these with the sound you may have recorded on a phone or a camera and replace it with the sound from something better. Okay, so, okay, so quite a lot of things are uh, in the future there, but I'm hoping that you could still use what you've seen today as you prepare your first videos for classes that are out of school. And if you've got any further questions, then either pop them in an email to me, you could even pop them beneath this video, and I will look forward to working with you soon. Bye for now.